Now I'm recording. It's starting so recording now. Asked, uh, Jane, uh, if okay, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Jane and I were talking about our our school situations, mm -hmm. and Jane said that she they were able to meet uh, in class, and I said, well, the 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 U.S. based um, campus, Fort Hayes, the main you know university. They're still holding classes um, as normal, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Things are going fairly regularly, but I was supposed to go and teach at this semester. And um, of course that got um, changed. So, so none of the, the classes in China are, are meeting face-to-face. So none of the students are on campus. The only teachers on campus were foreign teachers who were living on campus already, who had not left. Um, but none of us who were who were intending to come were allowed to come. So we're doing everything virtually. Okay, and so, so you're in China now. I'm actually in Hayes, oh, okay. so uh, I was not able uh, to to go to China. There oh, are some teachers right. that were living in China in the United States, and so have not been able to uh, <laughs> to go there yet. And so, I mean, we're all over. The teachers are all over the world, whatever different places they had traveled during spring break, or, or I mean, spring. Um, festival and um or whatever and so we're we're uh, teaching the classes uh online and then even the chinese teachers who are who teach yeah uh, okay so you were going to china but you were prevented from going is that right correct uh-huh and you're, uh, where were you teaching? Where were you going to teach? Um, in um, Hunan province. Uh -huh. um, our partner school is CIOS International University outside mm -hmm. of Zhengzhou. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, so what, what, so you're, you're, are you meeting the students online now from where you are? Well, uh, yes, I mean, we are doing a blend of synchronous and asynchronous. Um, I mean, the Chinese teachers who are there in the same time zone, I think they are meeting students uh, for the most, so they're doing more of a synchronous. Um, those of us who are in different time zones um, are doing kind of a mix. Like, I did have like an office hour with uh, my sections. It was last night my time, but kind of during what would have been our regular time. Um, and so I was able to, to connect with them. Uh, and so I've been trying to do that. We started classes February 24th, although it took about a week or two to get everything kind of set up and roster, you know, all the classes settled. And so I, I don't feel like we're, we really started classes until this week. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're doing a blend of, of uh, some synchronous or, you know, trying to, to meet synchronous, synchronously at least providing either videos or other materials asynchron asynchronously. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a new, it's a new, uh, certainly a new thing for the Chinese students, you know, trying to have an asynchronous class. I mean, they're used to same time, you know, class meetings. And so mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to get everybody uh, on board and figuring out what's expected and all of that. So. Um, and um, wh how are you handling the asynchronous and the synchronous parts? Well, I have taught online classes before, and mm -hmm. so generally, um, we have weekly modules and where we upload um, a list, uh, list of tasks 
and then um, try to provide uh, kind of fleshed out written instructions. Um, I know some of us are also trying to provide videos uh, through VidGrid um, and, you know, some other, you know, tools that we've talked about to, to uh, Screencast-O-Matic and some other things. Mm -hmm. We're all kind of trying out some stuff. And then just try and provide some deadlines uh, for students throughout the week. Um, and then, like I said, uh, as we're able to you know, synchronous meetings a week. Um, so far, I've just done office hours. Uh, starting next week, I may try to do like a class discussion, maybe try out the, the breakout uh, groups in Zoom, uh, some, you know, trying to, to ease into kind of a more synchronous feel, at least for part of the class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's really neat. So did you find, have you been using something? I mean, I mean, how did you uh, put all this together? Well, um, it certainly wasn't just me. Our, our um, technology department, uh, yeah, we have a pretty robust online uh, course um, offering through Fort Hayes already. And I, I have actually taught online uh, for the Fort Hayes, you know, just the regular program. Um, and so I had some background with that. That was usually, um, I usually delivered my material asynchronously. So I kind of had some, some experience developing, you know, kind of the, the written materials and the explanations and, and PowerPoints and other things to try to guide students uh, through the material, um, you know, by week, through week, uh, by week modules. And so I've been able to try to, to transfer some of that, but um, the um, we call it the tilt department or the tech department has just worked, I think, round the clock. I think they're still working around the clock to um, just make sure everything is in place and make sure because uh, especially in trying to make sure that we have the connections and that things are translated in Chinese and you know just whatever to make it as smooth uh, and accessible as possible. So. Uh, so really, a hats off to our tech department for uh, doing quite a bit of work, and they also have have uh, tried to um, make all the courses, all the Fort Hayes courses that are being offered in China, um, kind of very similar. So there's sort of a they've they've uh, kind of created a a shell, I guess, if you will, so that when students whatever course. They go into it's got, will uh, lower the 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 level of um, I don't know just anxiety trying to so it's not when you go into a different course it's going to be all this new stuff so we try to keep all the classes whether it's English composition which I teach or a business class or a nursing class or whatever they're taking it it is supposed to basically look the same and function the same and you know, just with the content being different. So we'll see, we'll see how it's kind of exciting. It's been a lot of work. Um, and I know the students would rather be meeting face to face, but uh, I think we're, we're trying to make the most of it. And um, it is definitely kind of forcing teachers uh, if they had not used some other tools before um, to, to definitely become for more, more familiar with those and, and hopefully in the future once we do go back to regular class meetings to again integrate those into more of a blended learning uh, environment so that that is certainly a um, you know we're kind of talking about that but. yeah let, let, let me step back a minute and say who we are uh, I'm Vance Stevens I'm in Penang Malaysia and uh, I'm teaching a course uh, this is the last day of the course the last three weeks I've been teaching a course on uh, using and creating blending learning environments. And Sharon is one of the people who signed up for that course. And, uh, and Jane Sheehan is here also. She's uh, a, a good friend and colleague of mine. Uh, we've met often face-to-face at, -face at TESOL conferences, or a couple of times anyway. And um, we're also interacting in EVO Minecraft MOOC. And Jane is actually one of the best 
contributors to this course. So she just, I just read your Schoology posts. So she's actually uh, addressing the, um, the issues. But, you know, one, one interesting thing about this course, it's kind of like Minecraft MOOC. You know, we, we set up a syllabus so that it's got face value and acceptable. But it doesn't mean that everybody has to follow that syllabus. So you have to kind of get away from that. I don't know if you've, you're encountering that, Sharon. You might be in a, a different situation. But the people uh, in this course that I'm – and in a way, I'm, I'm sort of trying to model uh, how a course can come together online and have right. a and synchronous components. And also I'm, I'm, I'm modeling how once the course ends, it could become a community perhaps or a MOOC or something like that. But that, that's, okay. yeah. that's what happens starting after we stop here or starting tomorrow. But I'll explain more about that in a little bit. But, but uh, um, situations, teaching situations are all different and you're in a place where you need to teach people a curriculum. And yes. Uh, yes, so anyhow, uh, what and our challenge, I mean, we're still mm -hmm. trying to think like for me, I'm teaching a writing class, mm -hmm. and so just how is that on in, in some ways? Typically, an online class, um, I've found can lend itself well to uh, an online environment because you know, so many people do writing tasks on computers mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. our challenge is that uh, many of our students because they weren't anticipating they didn't necessarily take their laptops home they don't necessarily have access to computers mm -hmm. they're doing a lot of their work on their cell phones and mm -hmm. so you know the challenge is okay well how do we ask students to write essays and things like that on cell phones and so we'll they, see we're, they can get started developing. using the voice feature on a cell phone if they can that's make, true, yeah. yes, that's true. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been. Well, actually, I've not had a lot of success getting my students to use cell phone uh, the voice features. Uh, but uh, another thing you can do is have them write something on paper, and then you can read it yourself into um, uh, into a Google Doc. Right. I did. Uh, mm -hmm. I watched that segment um, with um, was it Joe or you know, a week or two ago, and I think um, you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be, yeah. So there's, uh, we're exploring different, mm -hmm. different ways to uh, address the, the situations that students are in, but mm -hmm. still try to maintain the integrity of the course as much as possible, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jane, do you have any questions for Sharon? Um, um, yeah, it's very interesting. So what um, learning management system are you using for, for the courses? Um, our school uses Blackboard. Oh, okay. Blackboard, yes. And in fact, we're using, it's a version of Blackboard. Um, let me see. Blackboard Ultra. Hmm. I think is what we're calling it, mm -hmm. or oh. what they call it. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know about that anyway, genre. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's okay. Um, I don't know if it's the most user friendly, but that's something we've been using for a while, and so mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. that and, what we're and they using. have an app version, right? They do have an app version, yes. Uh -huh. So, okay. so students are able to um, to work with the material, you know, through the the mobile app, which is good. And yeah, go ahead, Jane. You were taking, um, you looked like you were going to say something. Oh, so so when whenever um, students have any questions and they post something onto the discussion board, um, you will get a notice on your phone, right? Yes, you can set it up to get notices. So um, okay. now we also use in China, WeChat is very popular. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have WeChat groups or mm -hmm. the, the classes. And so that is serving as kind of immediate um, communication or if I want to send out a reminder or something general, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to, to do most of 
Discord or through Zoom meetings or mm -hmm. other things and use uh, mm -hmm. WeChat as sort of a, either a, you know, for follow-up questions or for reminders or just general connections. So that, that, is, mm -hmm. that is another tool that is available. Okay, it's, it's, we, we do the same here. Um, we don't use WeChat, but we use uh, an app called Line. And that usually okay. is what I do for, like if I take photos of them working uh, in a group in class, I would up, upload the pictures um, in Line so that um, they get to see like uh, what they've done throughout okay. the whole semester and yeah. That's okay. interesting. And also you, you mentioned about using Flipgrid. I, I just learned about Flipgrid uh, be, because through, through this workshop. Uh, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> and I started using yeah. it. And um, you mentioned that you've been using Flipgrid. Can you share uh, more about that? Well, I've actually, I may have misspoke. Uh, I've been using um, Vidgrid to, to make some uh, videos. Mm. Uh -huh. And um, although I am aware of Flipgrid, I know um, I talked to the modern language department because they mm -hmm. have, they offer courses mm -hmm. online. And so I said, you know, what do you guys do for, you know, your online students? And Flipgrid was one of the, the main tools that came up. Um, and so I, I have not used that yet, but it, it might be a possibility, especially for one-on-one um, -on -one, uh um, conferencing or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm looking that well, up. I've not used Flipgrid yet, Vid but I have used Vidgrid. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The, the videos, you know, and it's pretty, um, pretty user friendly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is, is this it? Is that? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. So, what does it do exactly? It would, it uh, is it an well, app? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Similar to others, it's um, you can. Um, let me see if I. Do you want to see if I can share have, something with us? A, yeah. Let me see if I can find a um, an example. Just a mm -hmm. second. Do you have a share button at the bottom of your screen so you can share your? Uh, I do. Give me okay. just a okay. moment to find my bit grid. And you're working in Zoom also with your students? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's similar in some ways to like Screencast-O-Matic or, mm -hmm. you know, some other um, Capture, screen capture options. Well, it puts you in touch synchronously with other people as we're doing right now. Oh, right. You, oh, you mean, oh, you mean Vidgrid, Vidgrid is. That you can record. Yeah, Vidgrid is more, so let me, here we go. So it sounds like for what you're doing in China right now, your IT team is pretty much on top of this. They have Blackboard. Uh, ha are you having to set up your own courses in Blackboard or do they have courses set up for you? They have the courses um, set up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we just, we populate with content. Um, mm -hmm. We actually, at the very beginning, um, sent content, you know, documents and, you know, the syllabus and everything, put, put it in a shared folder. And the team there uploaded it all initially, just so we had, again, very um, consistent formatting and, and everything for the courses. And then uh, we did that for the, about, for the first six weeks. And then um, here on out, they identified a lead teacher for, for the different courses. I'm serving as the lead teacher for the English Composition 1 classes. And so I'm the 
content that is hopefully uh, user friendly online. And then I'll upload that to a master class. And then so other uh, comp uh, Composition One teachers can use that or at least start with that and you know, adapt as necessary, but at least they have, uh, you know, some materials, online materials to start with to, um, to address the, um, the different modules in the course. So, um, so this, and um, so I've done a couple of, I did a, a welcome, uh, one of the Chinese teachers asked me to do a little interview for International Wednesday, so I did that. Um, this is a, um, see if I can. That looks pretty cool. What well, it is so far, and let's see if I can. Like with all the videos that you've created on one page. Yeah, it, so it makes, I was gonna see if I could, I'll just play a little bit of this. This was for an assignment. And so it just gives me an opportunity, kind of like screencast, a Matic, which I've used in the past to talk through an assignment. Now this, I think I, I just did a screen share. I didn't uh, have video and, but I, I think you can do that just like that. So it allows you to, you know, play stuff. The next mm -hmm. of this video goes over. And then I just did a PowerPoint. So I was able to. Textbooks and either mag look for him mm -hmm. and kind of you know highlight you know just sort of go through a powerpoint yes. as if and that means you need to go back and revisit as if i were in a classroom so it gives me a chance to you know highlight or, or stop and explain things um vidgrid also has a uh caption uh um feature and we're working with that um it's Let's see, like down here, you can request captions or. Oh, that's nice. Yes, and you can do like machine captions, which come to oh, their email to you. Is this free? Um, we have a, um, I asked, for the um, through the tech the I te the the um, tech department and I think our um, school has a uh, an account they may have a free you know version available. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was going to see if I could. Oops. Well, this is showing, but there is a way. Um, you just request captions, and mm -hmm. we are working with FigGrid to even be able to do translated captions for our, our Chinese students. And so wow. that's in beta. So we haven't quite worked that out, but um, uh -huh. so there. So it that is would nice. Be super. So it's a it's a asynchronous. You know, you can record mm -hmm. uh, a PowerPoint or lecture or you know whatever you want to do, screen share and uh, put that up for students to look at. So I thought that way they don't, don't just have the document to read through, but they actually, uh, you know, have the teacher walking them through it as if, you know, I were in class or something. So uh, again, I've used Screencast-O-Matic similarly. So um, it's just another, just another tool. And again, this does have, uh, I think you could do both video and uh, screen capture just like you would with um, um, mm -hmm. So is that a screen capture while you are explaining going through the document? Um, basically, yes, it, you can you can um, share, Let me see. So what I about can, the highlight see, part? Like, for example, here's a record mm -hmm. Oops, Sorry wrong button. So the for the highlighting part, is that one of the tools um, that comes in VidGrid? Or did you do that in the document? Uh, in that particular document, it was part of the PowerPoint. Oh, so, part of the PowerPoint. OK. OK, for some reason. Oh, OK. Yeah. 
I don't know if you can see this um, record button up top, and you can actually move that um, around. No, so here you have. No, not really. We're, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now it's down here. And then you have the frame. You can, you know, kind of adjust it just the size. So very similar to Screencast-O-Matic, mm -hmm. which I've, I've used. Mm -hmm. And then you have the option here to webcam, uh, webcam only mode or um, choose a webcam. And so again, like Screencast-O-Matic or others, you can uh, have video, a video box mm -hmm. while you're doing your screen capture or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, and let's say you just um, you know, hit the record button and um, So anyway, those were, it's a pretty user friendly tool, like I said, and um, generally what we've been doing is saving, you can um, save it as MP4s. And um, I think that's what most of us have been doing. And then, uh, and, and, you know, just trying to keep them a short enough length where they upload pretty easily, as well as, you know, maintain the students attention. And so, uh, but yeah, so far I've enjoyed and like, you know, like you could, could see, you know, it, it, on the main page, it has all your videos. So, um, I said, it seems very similar to Screencast-O-Matic, uh, to me, but, then, uh, but it does seem that you're able to get the file, save the file more quickly. Screencast-O-Matic sometimes takes a long time to, for me at least, to, to process and upload and, and get the file, but VidGrid seems to be pretty quick. Hmm. And you can record your so um, your, so yes, uh, I would definitely recommend it as an as an option. Something um, I was I was asking, can you record on uh, your sound card audio and your uh, microphone at the same time? Uh, we heard sound card audio when I think when uh, we were listening to that a moment ago. What I mean is. Uh, do you record what's happening on your computer? Things seem to be freezing here. It's like, it's like when you're playing a music in the background yeah. and then speaking to your microphone with that music like in the both? microphone. I think you can do that. Would I haven't get tried that yet. And is it, is, with Screencast-O-Matic, you can only get the microphone unless you pay, then you can get both. Uh, okay. Is VidGrid free, or is you're paying for that? Well, like I said I I was sent the link t uh, through my school, and so mm -hmm. again, I think it's something our school has set up. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So so far, everything I've used has been free, but it, that may be because our school has an account. Free to you. I haven't <laughs> researched that, but I think they uh -huh. they may have a a Great. free version. Uh, uh -huh. You could try. Out, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely look into it. Certainly, um, it may not have all the features like uh, uh, they often don't, but yeah, I really like all the videos on one page. I I don't think Screencast O Matic has that function. Um, Does it? There I'm is sure. there is some place because I know I, I know in Screencast oh, okay. um, O Matic I've been able to see that. Let me see if I can bring up my you mm -hmm. you mean. But then Screencast. so you're. The, that, that's that's storing screencast o on I mean that's uh, vidgrid is being stored okay. on their hosting service apparently yeah so that's yeah, what you're yeah. looking at mm -hmm. yes yes do you do that with screencast o as well well it there's you I know with screen, screencast you have two options um, you can you know down you can save it as an mp4 and download it mm -hmm. um, and or you can save it to their yeah their server uh -huh. um, quicker uh, right now i'm just i'm going to try to go because i've never my, saved it to their server me I've neither always downloaded me too yes <laughs> yeah. so I'm, i haven't really experienced that but and i don't really know if you looking for your yes. videos on their server if you get that kind of uh, uh interface okay if if mm -hmm. if i take just a
did. You created, um, there's like a icon that shows how many people watched it. And I think screencast may do that. So here's my screencast. If I click on my videos. So it does have a page um, for my uploads. I haven't really organized them into fillers and, and things. Mm, okay. Yes. But there is an option to do that. Mm. Well, that that's nice. Yeah. I've yeah. So it's it, it, it is, it is similar. Yeah. So it is similar. So yeah. It, of course, okay. they have a free option. Uh, um, and then that you know they have some some upper you know some paid plans as well. Um, but um, generally, I've I've enjoyed the Screencast-O-Matic. Like I said, sometimes it's a little bit slow when you're trying to download, um, but the vid grid seems to be a little bit faster. But um, hmm. but yeah, so uh, I mean, it, they're, they seem to be a similar type of uh, option, but but the vid grid does seem to be a little bit faster, especially in time in terms of uh, saving. You know, being able to download an MP4 or whatever. It's it's pretty. Well, thanks a lot. I've learned a new tool. Yay! Yay! That's that's what it's all about. <laughs> yes. And and Jane was telling us in Schoology. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, Sharon, but uh, she's posted. You, you have a situation where you're teaching in Taiwan, I suppose, that your class in Taiwan okay. as a student from um, from the mainland or from where? Xiamen. Yeah, mm -hmm. Xiamen, mainland China. Yes, uh -huh. and oh, that okay. student yeah. cannot attend. So you're you're sort of doing the ultimate blend. You're blending your <laughs> class plus your online environment plus the uh, sorry the class plus a face to face environment. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, you got your. It's your... really difficult. <laughs> I think I failed him today. Oh. Because I, I I had to like I had to interact with my face to face like students, mm -hmm. all sixty of them, and um, and so and the the my students are not on Zoom. I'm the only one on Zoom, so mm -hmm. he could see me mm -hmm. in front of the camera. And, you know, talking, but you couldn't see the rest of the students. So mm. I'm thinking that everybody should be online. Why don't you turn the camera around so that your back is to the class, and mm -hmm. you can t teach the you can teach the class, and your back is to him. But at least he can see <laughs> your there, class. You know, yeah. Is there, there a way to there. flip flip the flip the picture? back in in front like sometimes I, have it on you and then sometimes show the class it's just it's just that like my teaching style I like to walk around in the classroom and mm -hmm. and not like sit in front of the um, uh -huh. laptop when you, when I'm you, in need front a, of, you need a like a video cam or something <laughs> or uh, yeah. what you're using right now you carry that with you the your mobile carry my mobile with me yeah. while I talk and oh that's nice that's that's a nice idea sure why not <laughs> yeah. you like you're doing right now uh, maybe you could right. have a dip, have two accounts you could have one account where you join your session on your mobile device and then mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. aim the camera out of the class and then you can walk mm -hmm. you can be among you can be out in the class and you can be talking to mm -hmm. your student at the same time. They can, oh, that's they can a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. a great idea. It's fantastic. I'm going to try that next week. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I did, yeah. I did, did you it's, see my yeah. Did you see my video from Cambodia? The presentation I did uh, in Cambodia. Yes, you were using your you were holding out your laptop like this, right? I don't. I don't think. I think my laptop was just sitting on the table, but I turned it so that you could see the audience. 
And, Perfect. Yeah, and then the uh -huh, whole, uh -huh. everything was the audience. You know, the audience dominated this whole thing. And I was just sitting there giving a presentation and actually calling people up because they were doing coding. And uh -huh. so as they solved a problem, I would call them up and, okay, come and tell me about it. And, you know, mm -hmm. we, uh, anyway, I thought it was a really nice dynamic. But, uh -huh. um, you know. Yeah, it, I saw that interacting. Yeah. It, it, I mean, that's what You're I'm thinking. You're the expert. In no. this, that's why we're taking this this workshop. <laughs> <laughs> we're just learning from each other, really, you know. So uh, that that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. So and well, I don't. Do you want to tell us any more about your class? Well, I have um, everything set up on Google Classroom, and um, I've posted videos and um, asked them to to do like search for articles and and so on and um Paul the student from China he's he's able to use VPN to use Google Classroom I because I was told um Google is not available. yeah it's not readily available <laughs> mm, okay uh, in, in China so maybe if he has access to a VPN, then then he should be able to get it. Yeah, yeah. So it's an it's it's an interesting situation. I'm learning a lot, like from this situation. And and um, um, also I have, like I have all um, my conversation class set up, um, on Flipgrid, so that my okay. students. Yeah, I asked them to all, you know. Uh, say, uh, videotape themselves saying hello and um, sharing one thing, fun thing about themselves. And and I've um, asked them to register on Twitter because um, part of the second week of the workshop or the first week of the workshop, you introduced uh, ha us how to um, hashtag and to have all our all of our sharings under one hashtag. Yeah, that works well. And um, yeah, it worked really well. And, and um, I introduced this uh, to all my students. And now um, I've got more followers. And also um, I taught them how to search for the, the most uh, current issues on Twitter so that they could follow. This would be a really nice addition to their like outside of class learning of English language learning, yeah. And uh, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, so it's it seems to be working for Blended 2020. Um, for some reason, it gets uh, advertisements. There's an advertisement right there. But uh, <laughs> somebody just joined the class the other day, and uh, there's Jane's uh, Flipgrid posting, and uh, Ajarn T. Ajarn means professor kind of in uh in thai it's a an honorific for a teacher so um yeah so anyway it's kind of bringing people together in a way or or certainly whether it is or not is beside the point but it mm -hmm. has potential for doing that and then the yes. workshops i gave in thailand you can uh all, you can see more clearly where people are posting photos and things like that as you mentioned earlier that you wanted that you were giving your students a record of the class did you was that in twitter the how, how were you doing no that's so that was in line and ah, so in line. If that's you right if you're not in our line group you won't be able to see yeah. so now i'm moving everything on twitter so that uh -huh. they get to uh people gets to see what's going on in our in our class and their friends and family could also see like uh they're doing great in in our program mm -hmm. it's part of like uh <laughs> advertising marketing no we don't need that but yeah it is I mean th and there used to be some tools that would go into tags in different uh, like well I mean Facebook is kind of a closed system but it would go into Twitter and into other blogs even the blogosphere you could pull tags out of blogs and aggregate them all into one interface and have this there were mm -hmm. Used to do that. I, I don't know if you're familiar with those or if you were doing this. Not, with, not really. Yeah, because they've they've kind of disappeared, really. But 
Um, one was called Spezify, for example. And you could just put a tag in there and you could search on that tag and it would bring it bring up all the tagged items from different places, Twitter being one of them. And uh, mm -hmm. that was really nice, but um, that doesn't work that way anymore. So Twitter is really the only thing that's really reliable. Flickr, if you're using Flickr, it's always been reliable for tagging. Instagram, actually, yeah. will you can use Instagram and you can, uh, but you can't get, a, I, I don't, I'm not aware right now of a tool that will say go to Instagram and Twitter and pull out all, all these things and aggregate them into, into one inner, one uh, display, which these things used to do really nicely. Mm -hmm. Something we're missing now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, used to be mm -hmm. easier, but, but Twitter still does it. So you can, at least you get people tweeting. It's reliable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I found um, like on Flipgrid was other teachers uh, like ideas and lesson plans that I could use and Ooh. adopt for mine. Some, someone created a, um, information about coronavirus, inserted a video on that and then created questions and, and I, I just used that for my conversation class. Okay. Um, for next week, and I and um, I've noticed that the it's part of the idea of open educational resources, where um, what people uh, you know, if if it's Creative Commons, then it's um, open for people to use it and reuse, remix, and repurpose. So I really like that. Um, which tool? That which, part of the, the Flipgrid. The, oh, Flipgrid. Flipgrid. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they so so teachers uh, when they come up with their own lessons on mm -hmm. Flipgrid and ask students to videotape themselves, um, they have a record of that. And if I think if it's open up to the public, then we could you know we could all see and use mm -hmm. it for and insert mm -hmm. it into our flip grid yeah and then, so my student can use it oh, okay. i really like mm -hmm. that idea mm -hmm. yeah the yeah, videos because right mm -hmm. now because right now see um like even in tesol the online community in tesol people like this professor from university of texas md anderson's cancer center in texas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's having to you know uh I saw his post. Uh -huh. uh, provide an, uh, yeah, online. I think he should come to your workshop. <laughs> well, actually, okay, let me do another share here. Hang on. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see. Because I put him. Like did people you... are panicking and asking yeah. for help. Right, because right, yeah. everyone is having to deal with this. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is the. Uh, this is our. This is the, uh, this is the, well, actually, oof, something has just popped up. Okay, so this is uh, workshops2020.pbworks.com. So if you go there, you get, the, you get the sidebar here. So in week three, I started accumulating. If I go to the week three class, I just clicked on the sidebar there for week three, and I got the week three. Uh, week three has a table of contents, and if you go down to what if your school mm -hmm. closes some resources assembled by teachers I put that um, that thread in here. here here it is so if you're a TESOL member you can go to this thread so that should work I'll just try it Let's I see. saw that yeah, uh -huh. post. okay uh, for fun anyway I'll I'll try and open it in a new tab so we can see what we're all talking about so yeah he says is. that mm -hmm. Oh yes, there there mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That all of his group meetings at the institution were being canceled until at least April 29th mm -hmm. due to the Yeah, and there's some really interesting things here. Like for example, Helene Marshall. Did you see her post? Uh where is it here? Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh here it is. Helene. Lane is uh really big on flipped learning and uh, she's put uh, let's see I guess uh, I think this is a uh, oh she, she did an EVO course on flipped learning and 
some of her resources are there. I have, actually haven't cl clicked on this one. Let me just see what happens if I click on it. Uh, oh, it's in a Dropbox. Okay, so well, oh, but it's a it's a PowerPoint. Here we go. So um, anyway, she shares resources there, and um, so there's a, there's just a lot of that stuff here that people are sharing. And another really good one is this one from Kim Cafino. I don't know if you know Kim Cafino, but she's uh, she's let me just click on that and see what happens. Um, emergency school closures, what to do if your school closes. So she's got a podcast mm -hmm. where she's talking about these things. And uh, I mm -hmm. got this off Facebook. Uh, I told her, I'm doing the same thing more or less. I'm trying to get this information too. There's so many people are doing this. She's just one person who's, but she's doing it quite well. You know, she's doing mm -hmm. podcasts and getting this information mm -hmm. together. So there's just all kinds of stuff coming together. Lucy Gray, do you know Lucy Gray in the oh, no. Steve Hargadon's, uh There's this document that they've set up, and um, mm -hmm. I think she's crowdsourcing this. What what people need to what people can do if they if they need t tips wow, for online teaching. Wow, see so many people. Yeah, and there's one of them is the uh, let's see the the NSCDS has its own page about mm -hmm. this. See if I can find it here. Um, I, you know what I'll do? I'll just go back to the, the one I came from. I think I, I had it linked especially there. Yeah, here it is right there. So somewhere in there you'll find this site, which is um, uh, NYCDS. NY, NSCDS means North Shore mm -hmm something uh county day school mm -hmm. obviously so anyway the, basically they have all these uh um, apps you can you know use to put your courses online there's all kinds of stuff like that happening now all of a sudden mm -hmm. this stuff is coming up in the mm -hmm. last few days last week i mean, this one uh some of the posts i've been collecting are from uh, uh one a couple of days ago that's two days ago uh three days ago Four days ago, so five days ago. Okay, so these things are coming hot and heavy now. You know, they're uh, starting every day. I'm finding several of them, and I'm just trying to catalog them a little bit. I don't know. Are, do you know Nancy White at all? She's uh, in, been in the community of communities of practice for a long time, so she has a little podcast here, which I don't think is all that. Oh, it's a little bit esoteric, but. It's not so practical, but anyway, she is big heavyweight in uh, connecting people online, and um, and then of course, what about this one? This is an episode, the last episode we did here. So Yay! And, and this, yeah, your, yours is down there somewhere, but this one. I this really is, like the, the Hong Kong people, the lady from Hong Kong sharing seesaw with her yeah, primary school kids. Yeah, and That's and, really... and like Blackboard with Sharon. This is kind of something that was sort of set up for them, so it, it's really uh, useful, yeah. I think, to tra you can you can transition into online if you're already in Blended, and the problem I mm -hmm. think is when people are not even into Blended, and they're yeah they're having to go they have to make this big jump and they don't know how what like Don put, yeah like Don yeah what is this thing I I didn't mean to identify him but. I wouldn't even know where to begin with teaching my classes online this semester. This is the the thing, you know, this is the sentiment of a lot of teachers. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? And it's fascinating to watch this play out because it's a big concern and people all over the world are, uh, you know, trying to grapple with it. Yep. Yep. So all these information are very useful. Yeah. So, well, people this is, mm -hmm. are coming together to to pull resources and sharing what they can as teachers do that's what we do this is you know this is how we, we were this is how uh, Sharon is taking a job in China and delivering it from Fort Hayes uh, because mm -hmm. you know this is everyone is just pulling together and doing these things uh, yeah. Yeah. so this is this course uh, I don't know how long you're gonna stay here but uh, oh okay there's Jane 
Um, this course ends today. Uh, to put it another way, I was asked to put on this course for three weeks and to actually even said do 25 hours worth of work in it. Of course, double, triple that has, has been gone into it, but it doesn't really matter. That's beside the point. I mean, obviously you do this because you enjoy it or you, you want it, you, you like it for some reason or other, it's your passion. So, uh, so week w one is finished, week two is finished, week three is finished, and we're now into the MOOC and community extension part of the course. And if you go to the Schoology, uh, you'll see something about that as well. I hope I have one. Here it is, the Schoology over here. This is my Schoology. Oh, that must be a sign. Well, I can do that really quick. Easy password. We also have N Nada Ashraf here. Ah, we have someone else here? Yep. Okay. Nada, would you like to say hello? <laughs> Please do. There we go. There's the Schoology course. So um, I've uh, it, basically I've set up a after week three, I've set up this connecting and using blended learning classrooms, explain what we're trying to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop doing this daily, stop obsessing on it and just leave a community <laughs> in place. And so <laughs> the first thing I did today was I set up a groups IO. So if you want to go to a groups IO and uh, looks like it's coming up over here. So I set up a blended classroom groups IO. I put in a uh, I put in a message there about what we're doing. Um, I guess let's see where would the messages be? Should be messages. Anyway, I I put a message there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, why this group? So I put uh, Don Carroll joined it. Um, mm -hmm. anyhow, I, you know, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere, but I think if we're going to have some kind of community that shares information, uh, we have to have a place mm -hmm. where with Schoology, I'm having to drive all the discussions. So I have I such discussion and other people mm -hmm. can do it unless I have a uh, bigger co-host or somebody like that. But basically this way, everybody can do it. So if anybody wants to join here and has a question, they can just put it there. So it basically extends the forum. Uh, features in Schoology into anybody can do it. So back to here, there are three things. First of all, you can join the groups IO. They, they provide a little widget where you can actually put your email address there if you want and you can subscribe or you can go to that link and you can join the course if you want or join the course. Not the course. It's, a, it's just a, a list and um, or you can still enroll in the Schoology course. It's still open. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with anything that's online. It's all just going to sit there and be as it is. And also, we also have Learning Together, which is uh, what I do regularly. Uh, learning Together is something else that I've been doing since 2010. And like tonight, believe it or not, there's a, a webinar that you're, you're, you're in right now. Oh, you didn't miss it. Okay, so... Um, then coming up, there are other events, a couple of days, there's somebody else's webinar, which was announced. So when things come up that uh, people announce, I put them here and learning together, or sometimes I actually do them myself, like we're supposed to be in Denver in April and doing some uh, uh, things there. I don't know if we're going to be doing that. Do you have any idea, Jane? Are we going to Denver? I don't know. <laughs> I, I suspect they're going to cancel it. I, I'm just that's my guess. But. Well, I, I haven't booked. Um, <clears throat> I haven't canceled my flight or hotel. So. Yeah, I still have a hotel reservation. Yeah, I'm waiting for the conference to uh, announce yeah. that. Yeah, but things are getting kind of dicey. <laughs> you never. I mean, I, I know. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, some countries are. If they, you leave the country, you can't get back unless you quarantine. So. Anyhow, uh, but basically that's learning together. What I've been doing with these webinars is the, the, the interesting ones like this one, I've been making learning together session. So that's uh, just what, um, what I've sort of set up for the community. That, oh, that didn't go far enough back, here we go. 
So this is, I, I just made this space here. This is my idea. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to keep track of it, though. I'm going to maintain it. I'm going to monitor, monitor it. If anybody joins it, I'll facilitate their, uh, their participation in the group. But I'm not going to be setting up things. But it could be a space where people can discuss things if they want to. It's just there. Thank you so much so that I can keep in contact with you, with Sharon, and with all the participants. <laughs> So that the, the workshop doesn't end here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, learning together is independent of this. Learning together is something that well, I've been doing that for, for quite a while. It's got a nice little uh, the learning together. Where do we go? Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, uh, this is the podcast site. And this session will be here. This is the one we did just the other day. I actually extract the audio and I put it up. And this is the one with Jeff LeBeau uh, a little bit earlier than that. And um, mm -hmm. I think in here we've got something about uh, Matty giving a something, you know, some <laughs> Minecraft game. So anyway, there's lots of, this stuff goes on all the time. It's been going on since 2010 and we're into 400, and this is the uh, learning together episode 443 right now march 11th 2020 as always tell people about that yeah so, i really enjoy reading all all the learning together uh vlogs yeah it's just something that i do to pass time <laughs> and and bring but people we benefit from spare it. Time, yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much yeah well thank you for joining the course and uh, thank you for coming and uh, participating in this uh, last uh, webinar for the course. But with the course also uh, ends my English language specialist gig, which that's uh, always an English specialist, English language specialist gig always lasts but for a set amount of time. And my mine was to run workshops for two weeks in Thailand and then do some plenary and workshop at the Thai TESOL conference and then do this on uh, this e-learning until you know, for three weeks. So that's it. I've, I've completed that now and uh, enjoyed it immensely and enjoyed interacting with you guys. And, uh, but now I'm, but, uh, I never stop. I'm in learning together and I've also set up a space here in, uh, in Schoology or in, uh, you know, the, uh, whoops. Let go. Groups IO. Yeah. yeah. Well, in groups IO, that's right. So somewhere it explains what I did. Oh, that would be in the week three here. Yeah, there's groups IO where you can. Anyway, that's all there. It's all sitting there. And if people want to continue participating, you never know. We've also got webheads. Webheads uh, that would just be complicated to explain webheads right now. But it's something that we started in 2002, and that's been going on ever since. So it's also a group that also gets uh, a lot of people are still interacting in that group. So the communities of practice is something I've been doing for a long time. You never know. It's a little bit of spaghetti you throw on the wall. Some of it sticks. Some of it doesn't stick. Yeah. But the ones that stick are really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you for coming, for attending the course, and we really appreciate your participation. And nice to meet you. So this is uh, Sharon Graham and uh, Jane Shen. Sharon is in uh, Fort Hayes, which is what what uh, state? Kansas. And so Kansas. in the okay. town of Hayes, Kansas, kind uh, of right in the middle of the United States. Okay, and Jane is in Taipei. Pay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm in Penang, Malaysia. And um, anyway, okay. Well, bye for tonight and hope to see you in uh, another venue. Keep participating. Unless thank there's anything you. else you'd thank like you so to do. Much. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing. Yes, thank you. If you make it to Denver, um, I might be there. Maybe we can. <gasps> we will see. But um, see, it's an easy face. drive for me, but uh, I haven't I haven't made official plans yet. I'm waiting to see what uh, pans out. But 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really sad situation because, yeah. you know, like Jane and I both, I, I suppose, I mean, I've, I've, I've got a booking, but I never did book a flight because uh, the flight situation is so unstable. You know, I mean, it's uh, mm -hmm. cancellations. You don't know what route to use or whatever. But I mean, even if I did book a flight, it would be cheaper, I think, than had I booked it a month ago. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. but just finding a plane and knowing that we'll go. And then anyway. Yep. <laughs> we'll not, see. Can connect online. So yeah, that's, great. that's true. Actually, uh, Jane and I are doing an event at TESOL, the best of EVO, which I'm oh, thinking okay. if we're going to do it, we could do it no matter whether we go to TESOL or not, because it's mostly online anyway, but we still do it on schedule, whether people are in, are actually in Denver or if we're online. Uh, I was wondering if they, you know, if they've thought of that, I mean, I know that'd be a huge undertaking, but instead of, you know, offering that option to do virtual presentations but I know well, ASCD has canceled their conference and do, going virtual okay like, yeah that's a big conference so I'm I'm not sure if TESOL is going to cancel I know a, another big conference that's in April is already canceled so triple AL triple mm, AL that one triple AL is always in the same city as TESOL and it always happens just before TESOL. A lot of people go to Triple A L and then go to TESOL. So uh -huh. that conference for it to cancel, uh, it ha I think has an impact on TESOL. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they've know. been, the last I saw on the website was they were monitoring the situation. Yeah, and, they were uh, monitoring the situation. So we will see. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the last time we experienced something like this was in 2003, I believe. Oh, is that the year that Bush invaded SARS? Iraq? No, there was the oh. invasion of Iraq. Oh, where, invasion. About that time, yes. Yeah, that happened. A TESOL happened at that time, and a lot of people didn't go because they were worried about oh. traveling. And so w when you arrive at the conference, it's kind of uh, not quite as interactive as you would like you're expecting. A lot of people were there. Yeah. But this one, I think, is much more serious because, you know, every day you're learning about people who just encountered in like the conservative conference that just happened, you know, and exposed people in the government. And I don't know. Anyways, I know. it's yeah. you kind of have to be careful. You know, people are just avoiding travel and mm -hmm. uh, putting themselves in these situations. So I think this one, if you did go, you'd probably find about half a conference there. So, I mean, you'd get people from the United States, I suppose. But even in the United States, uh, a lot of uh, universities I'm, are, are restricting travel within the United States for their professors. So mm -hmm. they're not funding them. Yeah, I, I don't think Fort Hayes has restricted. They've definitely restricted international travel. Uh -huh. um, obviously, I haven't heard of any within the country restrictions yet, but that could change today. I mean, who knows? But. Yes, exactly. This is the problem. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it is in force for some universities. They're not allowing yes. their staff to travel. So, and also another aspect is you're, we're talking about teachers who uh, are dealing with students or are dealing with class situations where suddenly we're having to go into an online environment. Now, you would think that TESOL could do the same thing. I mean, there. Right, and I'm sure it. there are talks about that. <laughs> Let's hope so. Well, e even so, I mean, but, but it, it happens that what Jane and I are doing, Electronic Village Online, is something that uh, it's an online, it's a five week uh, webinar series that happens in January, February every year. And uh, okay. all the people meet these classes online. So we're all doing online classes, several sessions. Jane and I are doing something called EVO Minecraft MOOC. And at, in TESOL, we bring all the moderators of these sessions together at the TESOL conference. But of course, they're not all going there, uh, only a few. So we actually set up an online event where we have a space in the conference. And some people will talk from the podium, but then we shift over to Zoom and we have the people come and talk there. And it's really right. well. For, we've done that a couple of years now. So that's something that we could do if someone goes to the conference and wants to run that from there. That's fine. 
and if, or if we just we could just run it online that's uh we still get the recording and uh, still get the people together so that's i think what we all have to be ready for i suppose you know so i hope tesol adapts mm -hmm. yes well, on I'm that note <laughs> yeah okay all right so anyway nice to see you again and uh yes thanks for all the chatting thank you thank you so much thank for you. everything okay thank you. okay bye-bye bye, -bye. Bye. Right. Bye, bye. See you again. See you again. Okay. Bye. I've got to figure this. Stop the recording. How do I do that? Here it is. Okay. There it goes. Bye.